Board of County Commissioners now in session. We'll begin with prayer followed by the pledge. Would you please some prayer, Commissioner Massey? Heavenly Father, we just ask you this morning to keep your hands on the Board of County Commissioners. Lord, just touch the oystermen, the seafood workers, Lord. We just ask all this in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, we got a little change in the agenda. We have Alan Pierce on the uh, telephone here with an update on several different issues facing the county. All right. Good morning. Alan's here to give you guys a couple of updates to restore, and I believe Alan get a point. Good morning, Alan. Okay. Good morning. Actually, I don't have any update on the restore necessarily. I will tell you that there was a on Triumph, so there was a board meeting. Uh, last week, and the Triumph Board did not do anything substantial. They are still waiting for the two new members to be appointed. And in the minutes that I saw from that Susan Skelton sent me, and she's the executive director, it appears they will not have a Triumph Board meeting in June, so I, uh, or the, it, it, June or July. So I presume that they're trying to get that appointment made. Uh, those two seats filled on the uh, Triumph Board before they have another meeting. Uh, I don't know when the next meeting will be scheduled, but it looks like there's a little gap here where they try to get their. Uh, that full board set up. And on Restore, things are still moving forward. The, uh, the application period is open. Uh, it will be till July 15th. And when, I'm a, when I am as president at your board meeting on July 18th, then I will be able to give you an update on who's applied for Restore and, you know, and, and give you a, and we'll get guidance from you all on how you want to proceed at that point. But the application is open now for anybody interested in applying for Restore funds. But the most important thing this morning is the, uh, the alligator point. Uh, two things are really happening. One, Will Kendrick, through Congressman uh, Neil Dunn's office, is meeting with FEMA this morning, and I, you know, we all hope that uh, the Congressman's office and Will can get some more movement on uh, with FEMA. Uh, they're a big federal agency, and so you know, Will is very persuasive, and we hope that we can get something done there. I will tell you that I got an email yesterday that I was not aware about uh, until I got back to the uh, cell phone range. Was that they have. FEMA has contacted and contracted with a company to start the EA or the environmental assessment process. So that's been started. I hope that Will can get some influence and get it speeded up because normally an EA takes 10 to 12 months. Well, ladies and gentlemen, as you know, we're already in June of 2017, so 12 months from now is June or July of 2018, which means we have two hurricane seasons, which is going to be very, very difficult for us to maintain that road out there. So we really need to get the EA speeded up, but it's a federal process, and we'll just have to see what happens. Uh, regarding the EA, the company that has been contracted by FEMA is the same one that's doing Gulf Shore Boulevard. So at least we know, and it's CH, they're called CH2M. They're a national consulting firm. I've heard of them before. I've never dealt with them except on Gulf Shore Boulevard. But at least they have some background knowledge on how they're point that they're doing the Gulf Shore Boulevard. Uh, thing right now. That's the good news. The bad news is I know in Gulf Shore Boulevard it's already taken them 10 months to get to where they're at and they aren't even finished yet. Uh, we hope to have the Gulf Shore Boulevard finished by September, which will be uh, almost a year uh, since they started that one. So I, unless there's some change uh, for the congressional pressure, I expect an EA on Alligator Drive to take 10 to 12 months. The other thing that is going on, of course, is you have some low pressure areas over there in Yucatan that may interfere with how that road is being, you know, how what it looks like. But at this point, the EA will start. Uh, there's going to be a kickoff meeting in July, and I'll be down there for that. And they, the uh, all the consultants who are a part of this EA, and I don't know all that all of them, but there's usually a whole team of between six and ten people. They will come to Alligator Point. And they will assess the situation in person. Just like they did on Gulf Shore Boulevard, we'll probably walk the whole length of the thing. And they will discuss their uh, different options. And I saw an internal memo last night that uh, this Andrea woman from CH2M had sent out where the options that they are going to look at are the one the county proposed, which is a, a sheet power revetment, concrete cap, asphalt road, and concrete cap on the other side. That's one alternative. A second alternative will be a bridge. And so they'll look at what options that, that uh, the feasibility of a bridge. The third option is what they call no action, and that's a required option by environmental assessment. Uh, 
That means we're FEMA makes a decision that it just is not cost effective to do anything down there. Uh, that's their prerogative. It's federal money. And then if there are other options out there that they may add into that. But those are at least three options that they at the FEMA end will look at. At this point, FEMA does not know that we've even talked about beach nourishment down there. I'm sure it's going to come up, and uh, this, is a, this is an evaluation they do. They very, they very well may ask about that because uh, that road has to be protected some way. So uh, the beach nourishment thing is an idea that is not yet connected to anything FEMA is doing, but I won't say, and I, and I fully expect that through the EA process, they'll make an evaluation about whether that is feasible or not. Uh, and whether they would even recommend it. So we're going to get input from them on that, uh, I, I feel certain. The, uh, the, the level we're in, though, is until the EA is completed, there is not going to be any federal money appropriated to repair that road. So we have the road as it is now, and as it will be for probably almost uh, two years, or at least a full year. Uh, we can't even begin to go to DEP to design a new uh, repair until we know what FEMA is going to pay for it. So we have 10 months of waiting for FEMA to do an evaluation, and then we probably have six to eight months of DEP, you know, permitting and all that kind of stuff. So it's, it, we're in a dangerous situation here. The only thing that, is, that might save us is that while we have a one-lane road down here, it is 20 feet wide, and you only need 10 to 12 feet for a true one-lane road. So if bad weather comes in, we have some shoreline uh, that can be eaten up and we can still maintain that road. So we don't want that to happen, but uh, at least we have a width of road that's wider than necessary to maintain traffic flow down there. And we'll just have to see how this, how this next week or so, you know, if we have bad weather in there. Um, the, uh, uh, the only other thing I would say about the EA is that it's done by FEMA. Uh, the county just responds to questions that they ask, and we provide them information. But they, so they're consultants, and they come to their conclusions on their own terms. And then they give us, you know, the, the answer. Uh, as I said, there will be a kickoff meeting down there sometime in the second week of July, uh, and then I'll be able to report on that kickoff meeting at the July 18th board meeting. So that's where we stand uh, at this time. Uh, I can answer any questions if you want to. Any questions from the board members for Alan? Alan, let me say one thing. You've used the term EA. Could you explain for those that don't know what... Uh, no, that sure, sure. An EA, yeah, an EA, it's called an environmental assessment. And so you would think, oh, that's just dealing with, you know, sea turtles and environmental issues. But the fact that EA is a comprehensive um, uh, analysis that FEMA does, and say it's called an environmental assessment, but what they do is they go through and look at options, uh, and they make an assessment on what they think is the most feasible option based upon some design standards, as well as they do their own cost-benefit analysis. So we have right now a $3.5 million proposed project that team was looking at, and that's going to be their ballpark, uh, as far as I know. They're going to say, okay, is it worth $3.5 million of federal money to be put down this road, or is there other alternatives that should be considered? So this is FEMA's opportunity to evaluate you know, what we're trying to do and the circumstances down there. Uh, so that's what an EA stands for, but it's really more comprehensive than just environmental. The one, the one other thing I'll say, Michael, is that uh, my concern for the board and for people in Algar Point is that we have a ballpoint trust fund that has some $400,000 in it. If we don't get some federal uh, and state assistance on this project, that ballpoint trust fund will be eaten up in this one project, and then there will be no future money to help maintain that road down there. And Alger Road Point Road is getting to the point where it's an extraordinary cost. Uh, your budget and your road department is, point, is financially able to handle average and ordinary costs in the course of the year, but Alger Point Road is getting to the point where it's an extraordinary cost. And we all are going to have to think about funding sources and, and how we're going to maintain that road. So I just say that, that coming down the road, um, and I'll certainly talk more about that on July 18th. Howard, Any question from the board from, for Alan? No, just to say that Alan's already briefed me on some of it, and I agree completely with what he says. And um, there's nothing, I mean, our hands are tied. Okay, all right, Alan, thank you so much.
Okay, and I'll be back in the office probably on Thursday. All right, safe drive. All right, see ya. <coughs> Next on the agenda would be the approval of minutes. So moved. Second. We have a motion on the floor by Commissioner Massey, second by Commissioner Lockley. Any comments? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? That motion carries. Next on the agenda would be payment of county bills. So moved. Second. We have a motion on the floor by Commissioner Sanders, second by Commissioner Lockley. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? That motion carries also. Next will be the Department Director's Report, Howard Neighbors, Superintendent of Public Work. Good morning, Commissioner. How y'all doing? Good morning. Uh, raining. Yes. Yeah. I got a couple items uh, on the grass cutting. We still maintain cutting grass through the county. And then we've been getting a lot of rain, so we've got a lot of messy roads, especially Lime Rock roads. And we've got a few call in, but as soon as it drives out a little bit, we'll fix them. So. Mr. Chairman? Yes. we got some roads that's uh, in bad shape that we need to do a one-time fix on where these people can get in and out. Prentice used to do it years ago. I talked with Buster, said they went a year and fixed them. we got some roads people can't even get into to their houses. We need to grade them or do something, try to help them get in. Mm -hmm. Mr. Chairman? Yes. What, what roads are we talking about, Commissioner? Uh, uh, we got Buck Street is one of them. Peggy Lane. Peggy Lane. Then we also got another road there in East Point, which is real bad, too. What was the, that? was the, um, I think it I'm not for sure what the name of it, it, the road is, but it's right there off North Bayshore Drive right there. Yeah. So. Are these private roads, Howard? Sorry? Are these private roads or public they're roads? Private roads. They're private. They're not county roads. So. Yeah. I mean, commissioners, we've dealt with this request before, I mean, many times in the past, and my, my consistent advice to the board is to not put your public equipment on private property unless there's a declared state of emergency. If there's a declared state of emergency, I think there's a legal basis for you to go in and render some emergency aid on a temporary basis. But absent a declaration of emergency, I don't think that there's a legal way of putting that, that equipment on those roads. And the thing we run into- That is up to the board. Yeah, the thing we run into, we have call in, but you know, they say, well, we pay taxes, you know, so. Puts, puts yes, ma'am. Well, two I of them, I went road. down. I went, went down two of them this morning where Howard's talking about you can't even get down to the houses. I mean, you're going in the ditch. You can't. It, it's, it's. I mean, we no, got to try. The damage can't even get in there to the to the road. They had to sit out by the road and try to get them out of the road, brought, brought them out in the car to get them into ambulance because it wouldn't even go down there. Right. I mean, I, I agree it's a, a bad situation on those private roads, but, you know, th those are not public roads and we're talking about putting public dollars onto a private piece of property. And the way the case law reads and the Attorney General opinions read, the way I understand them is that only during a declared state of emergency are you allowed to put public equipment on private property. I mean, it's really an issue where they bought into these private subdivisions and the roads were never built to county standards. They're, they were never built up with ditches and their, their low-lying areas and it's just a, it's a terrible situation for those folks back there but that that is what the law says that, that you've got to do now if there's a declared state of emergency we've got these storms out there uh, I don't know that the state of Florida has yet declared a state of emergency but once that's done then Howard will be freed up to go in and help these people I just know they can't get down in there and uh Pam or could you come forward, please, for a second? Are we? Are you looking at Florida being in a, in a declared this, state of what emergency? What we're looking, no, sir. Right now, the state's just monitoring. Okay. Right. I mean, this is going to be rain and surf event for us as far as 93L because it still hasn't uh, formed yet. And then you got the one below it that they're saying when it comes across that land down there, it's going to. Do. So I don't foresee. A state of emergency from the state. Can I? Yes. Now, a question for you, Michael. If the county did a local state of emergency, would that cover? A state of emergency is a state of emergency. When, when, when was the last state of emergency we had? Oh, uh, the uh, fire. Well, y'all did a local state of emergency for the fire. We won't put the fire ban on. Would that cover? I don't think you can. White. 
You're looking at me with a question. Your well, the question is question. that was for the for the fire. I don't. I, that's already yeah, expired, that, that, Commissioner. That, that, that fire, the, the emergency uh, declaration, the, only lasts for an increment of seven, seven days, days, and that that uh, seven day period has long since lapsed. I mean, that, that was weeks ago. And we can't just declare a state of emergency so we go in and fix these roads. We got to have a legitimate reason for declaring a state of emergency. Is that there, there has to be a factual basis yeah. for the declaration of the state of emergency, yes sir. And if we declare a state of emergency, then you have to reconvene the board to actually do that? Yes sir. Every seven days, yes sir. So we need to monitor the situation until we see what these storms are doing and if we happen to have to come together and declare a state of emergency, then I will be able to go in and help these people. That is, that's correct. That, that's what your EOC would be monitoring. If there's a need to declare the state of emergency, she would contact Mr. Marone. Mr. Marone would schedule the emergency meeting, and then y'all would make the declaration. And at that point, then Howard would be able to go in on a, on a limited basis and then provide some aid. This SA rain is not considered a state of emergency. I mean, with the that rain we had. You're going to have some rain. If I gave you a sheet. If you look at it, it's, it tells you the accumulated amount through Thursday. But we yeah. done had all of this two weeks. We've been raining. You're going to have some. You're going to have some. Probably some river flooding after this. A couple of days after this. Yeah. Uh, but right now, Blountstown is three to four feet below what they normally are right now. So they're going to absorb a lot of that water on this this side. But again, we have you had a lot of rain, and there's no way for them to really predict what's in the woods and what's going to be run off. I know if it rains a couple more days in two roads, and how we're talking about, they're not going to be able to get into their houses. It's bad. It's bad. I went down there in my four-wheel drive truck this morning. It, East Point Water and Sewer went there and dug it up and was supposed to fix it and did not go back and fix it. I talked with them, and they said they were going to do it, and they have not done nothing. Well, you've got rain through Thursday. That's what's it. predicted. Mr. Chairman, yes. if I may, sir, I don't believe that last statement would be <clears throat> factual. And I'm not trying to mix business, but as I'm on the East Point Water and Sewer Board, it was fixed. It hadn't been continued to be maintained like they want the <clears throat> county to do, but that road was fixed. I don't know. Uh, as, as a board chairman, I think we need to monitor the situation. I don't think we need to go in and fix roads as advised by the attorney. Uh, we can't just sit here and declare a state of emergency just in order to go in and help these people. And we're not under a state of emergency. We don't have any factual basis to be putting the county under a state of emergency. Uh, and that's my opinion as a chairman. Mr. Chairman. Yes. The dirt roads are all bad. We've had a lot of rain in the last few days. Um, but as we all know, uh, when you have a lot of rainfall, you can't go in there. You're limited to what you can go and do anyway. The first thing you got to do is get the water off the road, and only Mother Nature and the sunshine is going to dry that up. So, I mean, until then, until the weather gets better, you're not going to be able to do nothing anyway. Uh, now, I was talking about after it got through raining yeah. to, to try to get yeah. it where you can. Uh, speaking from experience of living on a dirt road, all my life it's just it's just one of them things i mean you know i i would love to go in there we went in there before because we had somebody that had to have the ambulance and they couldn't get down into it we did it then but it was a state of emergency he's still there he's still at the end during the state of emergency so and we had to do it during a state of emergency so anyway well if you tell the truth Ain't none of them private. If you say you went back there and fixed them when that prince man was back there. You go in there and fix them so many times they belong to the county anyway. So ain't none of them private. Anyway, commissioners, I will keep monitoring the situation and if I feel the need that we need to do a local state for emergency, I'll let Michael know, inform Michael so he can let you know. Okay, thank you. All right. You got a note. Okay. What's that? I had a couple of issues. Of yeah, that was just about the grass and the messy road and stuff. Okay. There. <laughs> you can't help the rain, how no, we right. know that the grass rain. is going to get high. And a lot of people, you know, they call about the messy roads in some places. We 
there was a lot of hard line rock back years ago which was put on the roads. <clears throat> and if them roads don't percolate, and which the rain we had now would it percolate or not, so much rain, you got 40, 50 vehicles up and down the road, it's, it's going to get bad. So mm -hmm. That's even with asphalt. You got water standing on asphalt, eventually it's going to beat out. How about our ditches and all that, how are we making we check, checking we've been all the ditches? Checking all the ditches. Some ditches, is, the water has to get up a little bit higher before they run off. So, yeah, we, we've checked most of the ditches in the county and the cover. So, well, I'd, I'd like for you to continue monitoring that while we're going through the. the okay. Which a lot of people put that pine doing. straw and stuff. They throw it in them ditches right at the end of a cover. Then you get a little rain, some of our straw washes up in there, and you get a bunch of rain, and you got a mess. So. And like a beaver down. <laughs> yeah, sir. That water stand up flood. Does the board members have any board members have anything else for Howard? Mr. Chairman, I do. Yes. Mr. Howard, I just want to thank you and your department for everything you've done. I've gotten repeated calls from the island, mm -hmm. and every one of them are saying thank you for how y'all yeah. handled okay. all of our events lately. I got one more thing for Howard. Uh huh. Howard, right there in front of uh, their their oyster house. There, there's two. Palm trees right there on Patton. the side of uh, Patton Road, East Point. Yes, sir. Right, right there, right. them two palm trees. When you pull out, you can't see. Okay. Come with. Could you trim them back? We do. We take care of it. Any, any other board members have anything for Mr. Howard? <coughs> Thank you, Howard, for coming in. Thank you, Mr. Fonda Davis, Solid Waste Rec. <coughs> Good morning, Commissioner. Mm -hmm. Good morning. Just a uh, couple of things here. On the solid waste end, I, uh, if you see what you, in your report, the projected cost for the transfer station that you uh, want me to bring back to the board. And on park and rec, uh, we have roughly at this time is four teams will be advancing to state. So I uh, just want to let you know about that. Tell us what teams are going to be advancing to state. It's, uh, Ponytails and the bells with the girls and the double A and ozone with the boys. Did good, didn't you? Yes. Where the state at this year? Uh, ozone, I'm sorry, double A is going to be in Seaver. Seaver. Right, and uh, I think the uh, ozone is going to be in Mar Mariana. Yeah. And the girls? Uh, I believe it may be Blunkstown. Yeah, I'm not sure, Commissioner. The one's down south? Yeah, that's the uh, double A. It's Seaburn, Seaburn, Florida. Seaburn. That's what, I think that that's where it was the last time we went. That, that's the, right. The double A. You know the dates and stuff? Double A is the 30th through the 4th of July, I think it is. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Don't have the dates for the rest of them yet. The 30th, that's on that Friday, isn't it? Mm -hmm. yeah. Coming back from South Florida. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> um, animal control is, is going good. We're having a lot of bike cases going on right now, but yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. Other than that, everything is good. Thank you for getting that cost estimate up for the transfer station, Fonda, okay. so yes, we can look at it. And Okay. You have to take that into consideration during the budget workshops and all. Okay. So make sure you, you know, I know it's on our iPad in case it gets deleted, make sure you keep up with the documentation here that you provided so that we can re, re look at that during our budget workshop. Okay. And see how we're going to address that issue moving forward. Does any of the board members have anything for Mr. Davis? Thank you for coming in today, Fonda. Thank you. Next will be Ms. Pam Brunel, Emergency Management Director. Um, I do not have any action items, uh, Commissioners. I do need to uh, bring up the issue of our EMPA grant. Um, I don't know if y'all are aware of it, but the um, Florida Department of Emergency Management, when they write our scope of work, have written it so that it's basically going to make it impossible for us to spend our funds like we need to spend them. They are trying to mandate federal guidelines on state money. Um, and actually, I shouldn't say state money. Let me give you all and the public a little background on what, how this trust fund came about. This trust fund is paid by you. 
every person in this room that has an insurance policy, if you'll look on it, it says catastrophic and you'll see an amount that comes out. The state of Florida, after Hurricane Andrew, decided that they needed to do a trust fund for the county emergency management. So your money goes into that trust fund and it is used and it states in statute that it's supposed to come to the emergency management directors to use as they see fit to protect and serve their citizens. They're trying to implement federal guidelines. The federal grant we get is very little, but it's very strict. Uh, they're trying to implement uh, what they call an AEL number. You can only buy purchase things that have that, an AEL number that are in the federal guidelines. <clears throat> Sandbags are not in there. Uh, neither are other certain things that we need to help support y'all when we have a disaster. So it has been a big issue with that. Also, they're trying to mandate the criteria of what they think an emergency management director should be. Doesn't matter if you've been there 28 years, if you don't have this, these certain uh, classes that they now seem to think that that's what our emergency management director is, they're going to take away the county's funding, a certain percentage. They will ding us on it. They're basically trying to set criteria, hiring criteria for emergency management, taking it out of your Board of County Commissioner's hands, in other words. This has been, we've been battling this for months, and in our comments, they basically just sent this out to us and said, well, give us your feedback. Well, we sent our feedback. They didn't like the feedback, so then they come back with something else. It was worse than what they proposed the first go round. And I think Commissioner Sanders has gotten an email from y'all. We all have. Uh, Florida Association of Counties. Uh, and the Small County Coalition, Chris Doolin. Yes. And, and what they're doing is, he said that they met yesterday and it says uh, they're doing a revised uh, scope of work. You met with um, uh, the uh, Department of Emergency Management Director Brian Coon and uh, said that they will uh, try to do a revised scope of work, but it concerns me that you still got the concerns of the emergency management people that's not being addressed. And um, I'm, I, you know, for what it's worth, I, I think we need to write a letter supporting our emergency management director and, and her thoughts and stuff. And I'm going to make a motion to that, uh, yeah. that we um, go ahead and uh, have her and Michael Marone, have Pam and Michael Marone draft up a letter and send it to the governor, Brian Coon, and to our legislative dele delegation to let them know. I know they're trying to work out some things and they have been able to work out a, a few of the items, but the big items are still standing out there in limbo. So it says the major change, it said the major change was the elimination of the required training requirements as well as other important clarifications on what equipment could be purchased through the base grant. But, and then he's thanking all the EM directors that, that tried to help. But I'm going to go ahead and make a motion that we send it supporting our emergency management director. We have a motion on the floor by Commissioner Sanders, second by Commissioner Lockley. Any further discussion? Yeah. Uh, Ms. Pam, do they know what y'all need? No, sir. Uh, basically, if you go by the federal guidelines, that's, that's why we use the, the federal grant we use strictly use for salaries and we use some of the EMPA because y'all know the county puts the smaller portion. We have to put something in it that's mandated by the state. Uh, basically, all I can buy off of that AEL number is I can buy plenty of guns for this county. Well, let me... Uh, yeah, that's <laughs> <gun> okay. <laughs> that's about what's on there. It's guns. It's um, what need, cyber stuff. I mean, it's it, it's set up. That AL number is for Homeland Security. That it's federal money. It's to buy Homeland Security stuff. But then the state mandates that I cannot spend my money to directly support law enforcement or fire. Oh, wow. Only way I can buy anything that they might possibly could use is I have to tie it to one of my plans. Well, let me. Ask, uh, you believe it's possible in your letter you can tell them some of the things you need? <clears throat> I sent them an email the other day because um, they asked our opinion the second time mm -hmm. and I pretty much laid it out for them and I said, you know, sandbags aren't, they're not on the AEL number. 
Um, Y'all know last year I bought a shed and put over in, and again, this is out of state dollars, not county dollars, state dollars. Um, I put a shed over in Carabell to put sandbags in because it becomes a problem. I wanted to buy another shed. I was trying to get somewhere where I could put closed in sandbags so they don't get wet and they don't deteriorate. And then we have cert teams that we now can establish there and they can help hand out. There's no AEL number for a shed. We started a new program. Uh, uh, Jennifer Daniels, my special needs direct, uh, coordinator, talked to a company and we've got medical wristbands now that you go in online, put your information in. Um, EM, uh, EMS can flip that band over. If they got a smartphone, they can take a picture of it and it will tell them that person's medical detail. Because we have people that go to the shelter in Tallahassee Special Needs Shelter. This is part of our program now. It's a, they gave us 10 and we bought some more. Well, when we run out of those, we can't buy any more because we have no AEL number for it. So programs will die. Things that, we, programs that we've started that we're building on because we can't afford to buy everything for it all at one time, like our reentry trailers, we're buying some lights um, to go in those. I mean, big lights that will light up a big area because when you do reentry, the sheriff's officers are gonna be standing there. Well, they need to be lit up at night. Hopefully there won't be any traffic on the road, but if there is, somebody needs to make sure they don't run over that officer. 